The last learning objective of this module is core area mapping. So core area mapping is estimation based upon the high probability of occurrence. So where uh, things happen more, um, they become part of the core area and then it could be related to the density of something happening. Um, so core area is the primary area of influence or activity and mapping involves identifying area uh, from a set of points um, and associating an intensity or density with that. It's very useful for analysis of spatial patterns. So here is an example of uh, spatial variation of tweets. And it's the, the tweets in the morning. And uh, here is the core area map of the tweets that included good morning message. And here are is the core area map of tweets that used profanity. And as you can see that it shows us um, where was the high density of that kind of language, good morning versus profanity, and how it is distributed spatially and how its density you know, um, changes with space. So it's an interesting way to analyze the spatial patterns. The, there are a couple of types of core area mapping techniques. One is called the mean center and mean circle. So in this case, if we have some sample points, we find the mean point, and then these circles represent some form of variation with distance. Um, and for example, if this was the source of a pollution, then this could be these different radii could be the fate of the pollutant. Or if this was an explosion, these radii could be the, the damage impact of that explosion. Um, and so this is one way of showing the core areas. The other one is called convex hull. And in this case, we are trying to create a polygon around these points. Um, and the reason is called convex that it has to form a convex surface not a con concave surface. For example, this would be a, a concave surface or concave line around forming the boundary. And um, so, and then this would be a convex hull. And this is another common way of uh, creating a polygon or core of core area from selected sample points. And the last one is called kernel mapping. In this case, we create a continuous density surface from the sample points. And the kernel is um, the function that provides the density distribution at each sample point. So the most common one is called the Gaussian kernel. And um, it's, um, it comes from your statistical background. But it, this is the shape of a typical Gaussian kernel, a bell-shaped curve. And in case of 2D, it actually looks like a little bell. Um, and when we are doing the kernel mapping on sample point, we place the Gaussian kernel. And wherever our point of interest is, we can create a continuous surface using the Gaussian kernel applied onto the samples in the neighborhood. Uh, in a way, it is related to interpolation, but it, in this case, it's called kernel mapping. Here are um, some examples. So here are some data points. And in this case, the, the Gaussian kernel gives us the density of the point. So as you can see, there's a maximum density here and here. And then as we go away from this point, the density reduces, the density of the points on the surface. Here is another example. Uh, the similar kind of uh, uh, density mapping uh, using a different set of points. Here is an example of earthquake uh, magnitudes. So um, based upon the point measurements, the core area mapping has given these polygons with different colors, and they provide the information about um, the earthquake magnitude as a continuous variable, variable on the surface.